Welcome to our Dam Education Series. In this episode we'll be talking about more water, less bubbles. What do we mean by more water, less bubbles? Well, it's really about the promotion of hydration in diving. It's very important to be hydrated or to avoid dehydration. Why? Because dehydration has a number of effects on the body. That means that you lose fluid, but not only that, it can exacerbate medical problems. That should be avoided. And as a diver, you have an additional concern, a concern of aggravating the chances of developing decompression sickness. Why? Why would dehydration increase that risk? Well, it's because dehydration reduces the volume of blood and plasma that flows through the tissues so that the blood is thick and it reduces the blood flow, which is not only responsible for nutrients, but also for gas exchange and therefore nitrogen or inert gas exchange and elimination is less effective. What are the causes of dehydration? Well there are nine, in fact there are probably many more, but at least nine behavioral and environmental factors that we would like to emphasize that may lead to a diver's risk in being dehydrated or becoming dehydrated. The first is literally the air that you breathe. The air in your scuba cylinder is dry and you lose more fluid because you have to humidify this dry air with every breath. And the colder the water temperature, the more your lungs and nasal passages need to commit water from the body supply to actually moisten the gas that you breathe. Secondly, immersion causes diuresis. We refer to this as the P phenomenon and that means that when you're in water as a result of the cool water, the change in blood flow to the skin, blood vessels constricting in the skin, shunting to the heart, lungs, and large internal organs in an effort to keep you warm that as a result the kidneys interpret this as overhydration and therefore actually produce more urine which means that you lose more water and salt once again. The third effect is sweating. Depending on the environment you dive in and most dive sites that are popular are in warm climates, you would sweat even in a t-shirt, let alone in a wetsuit. So there's a lot of sweating related dehydration that happens. Sun, warmth and wind also contribute. So you sweat and the combination of sun and evaporation leads to additional dehydration. And a little bit of a breeze does a lot and causing additional dehydration. And then there's seawater. The salt that's left on the skin, the salt crystals that are left behind on the skin actually increase dehydration further. The sixth point, divers are growing older. Yes, and as a part of that, many divers have hypertension and some people on antihypertensives will also be taking diuretics. And diuretic medication means that you lose more fluid through diuresis. And that means that dehydration will occur even more quickly because you lose additional water in your urine. 7. Alcohol. We know it's a reality that divers do drink alcohol. We don't recommend combining alcohol and diving and certainly one should not be hung over when one uh, plans a dive. But alcohol has the additional complication that it leads to dehydration. Alcohol causes diuresis. 8. 
If you're in a tropical diving environment, the chances are quite high for you to develop traveler's diarrhea. And this combination of diarrhea or vomiting, which may also be the result of seasickness, can dehydrate you and cause large fluid shifts and loss of electrolytes over a short period of time. And then there's the time you spend on the plane. The diver's air cylinder is not the only cause of loss of fluid, but the cabin air also is relatively dry. So you lose a lot of body fluids in breathing the cabin air of a commercial airliner. And then, what do you order when you fly? Well, it might be coffee, Coca-Cola or beer, and this causes additional dehydration due to increased diuresis. What are the signs and symptoms of dehydration? Well, we can actually measure bubble scores and detect additional bubbles as a result of dehydration. And of course, one can look at urine color and it becomes darker the more one becomes dehydrated. But the important thing we want to emphasize is that you should not wait until you feel thirsty before you actively start rehydrating. It should be a simple habit to always have water handy and to continue taking fluids continually throughout the day and try to stay ahead and as far as possible keep your urine clear. In other words, it should actually look like water. If you develop a sticky or dry mouth, dizziness, headache and muscle cramps, it may mean that you have severe dehydration and medical care may be required. Extreme thirst and a very dry mouth with skin folds that actually sag when you literally, when, when you pinch the skin and it actually slowly gets back into position may mean you have lost a significant amount of fluid. And then you can go into shock with rapid heartbeat and a weak pulse, rapid breathing. All of these things have a significant influence on the loss of fluid and the risk of dehydration. Now with all this bad news and scary uh, information that we've just given you, what can you do to actually prevent the problem? Well, keep yourself hydrated. Don't put your wetsuit on until just before you plan to dive because one tends to sweat in a wetsuit and that will lead to additional fluid loss. Protect yourself from too much sun and sunburn. If you do use alcohol or take coffee at all, do it very, very moderately and make sure that you take additional water or non-alcoholic fluids to make up for the fluid or liquid that you lose in your urine as a result of the alcohol. And that's really a summary of our More Water, Less Bubbles campaign. This Dan Safety campaign is being promulgated throughout the world. It's an idea and in fact a culture of reducing bubble formation and thereby preventing decompression illness. Stay hydrated and dive more safely. Discover more about this program and other Dan Southern Africa safety campaigns by visiting our website on www.dansa.org or follow us on Facebook and Twitter and of course subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching and we hope that this makes your diving not only safer but also more enjoyable.